Once more, we embark on an exciting lecture in Module 1, and in this particular discussion, we're going to re-examine z-scores. We met z-scores in the last discussion just as a means of expressing the location of a datum in light of mu and sigma to allow interpretation of the datum's location in the population. I think uh, you, you must know that you cannot forget anything and you will recall this discussion. In this, uh, in this picture, we had a data point of 150. We took that data point and wanted to determine how many standard deviations it was above the mean. Well, our mean was 100. Our standard deviation was 20. And we were able to see that this datum had a location at 150 of about 2.5 standard deviations above the mean. And by looking at the number of standard deviations above the mean, we identified that that was a z-score. You should recall that discussion. I know that it was very exciting at the time. We can see that a raw datum of 150 is 2.5 standard deviations above the mean. Uh, as we notice that, though, we, we might wonder, well, what would we do if we had a datum with a value of 92? And go back to 150. 150 was easy to look at and predict what the value would be, but 92 is an altogether different case. We can see that it's below the mean, but we just don't really know quite how far below the mean. So determining a z-score for it just by looking at it and, and guessing what the z-score would be does not work. We need a formula to find these z-scores. And lo and behold, ask and you shall receive. Here's the formula. The z-score for an x value is equal to that value minus the mean all divided by sigma. Uh, obviously, this is for a population. And you know that because we have mu and we have sigma. Consider a z-score formula for a sample data. Coming out of the sample, it would be x minus x bar divided by s. Obviously, uh, the names were changed to protect the innocent. What is the z-score of 92 when mu equals 100 and sigma equals 20? Well, we need to look at the things that we need to know in the formula. We need to know x, we need to know mu, we need to know sigma. Reading our problem, we find that we are told x. x is 92. And we are told mu. Mu is 100. And we are told sigma. Sigma is 20. All we would need to do is to plug those values into our formula. 92 for x, 100 for mu, 20 for sigma. Then we would move through and begin to simplify. In the algebraic order of operations, the first thing we would do is what is above this bar because it is considered to be in parentheses. So we would take 92 minus 100, which is negative 8 when we simplify the numerator. Now we need to divide negative 8 by 20. And when we divide negative 8 by 20, we get negative 0.4. So we know that the z-score of 92 when mu is 100 and sigma is 20 is negative 0.4. These things are really fun. Now let's look at our picture. When mu is 100 and sigma is 20, a score of 92 falls right here. That z-score at that point is negative 0.4. We should begin to notice some things now. We notice that those values which of, of datum values which are below the, va the, the value of mu uh, turn out to have z-scores which are negative. If we subtract any of these minus 100, we get a negative value. We also notice that those that are larger than mu, like 120, 140, and so forth, when we subtract that, them minus 100, we get a positive value. So z-scores below the mean are negative. Z-scores above the mean are positive. And well, we have three great concepts to remember. A z-score is a way of expressing the location of a datum 
in light of Mu and Sigma to allow interpretation of the datum's location in the population. Z-scores below Mu are negative. Z-scores above Mu are positive. We now know all. Once more, in closing, I want to thank you very much for your support and for your patronage. You have just made my day by watching this video. Have a good one.